All right, hey everybody. Welcome to episode 83 of the Reseller Clickbait Podcast. How'd we do there? Did I do all right? That's That was good, I all think. Right, we... Yeah, that worked. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> we're here, and we're going to do a little bit of a reselling topic today. It's... Yep. We'll kind of go over that. It was a it was a deep discussion, and and we're going to continue that discussion here. But yes. first, how are you this morning, Ken? I'm cold. I'm cold, Corey. Yeah. It is cold. Uh, it is. It's like two degrees outside, negative eighteen wind chill, and oh. everybody knows my thoughts yeah, it's, on. It's winter. just ridiculous cold. It was twenty two below zero yesterday. It's 18 below zero today, actual temp. The actual temperature was 22, yep. minus 22? That's Even ridiculous. people in South Dakota are like, this is stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's cold. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I've been, I had talked about my 10, 10 complaints about winter. Everybody's going to get tired of, of me because every year every, I get older. As I get older, just the winters just get uh, more and more brutal. You were complaining stuff. about weather when it was 50 degrees there. It was well, you know, my philosophy, any any day where the temperature <laughs> in a 24-hour period is below 65 degrees, that's winter as far yeah. as I'm concerned. This and is so, definitely winter. You're right there. So, we're going to go right into the new segment on the show, Ken complains about winter. stinks <laughs> very very matter of fact broadcasting there. Yeah. <laughs> it was i you know what more can one say about however that, that was kind of sums up how i feel about this weather the last couple of days we've actually <sighs> we closed our in town the escape room and axe running business we closed it yesterday i think we're going to again today yeah just because it's too cold to even think about dry. Like, I don't even like looking out the window when it's this cold. It just makes you feel <laughs> cold. Yeah, nobody wants it. The wind, we got high wind warnings yep. along with snow and just, I'm just, I'm, I'm done with it. But, you know, I sleep well. I got the hot pocket. I got, I'm full on hot pocket right now. This hot pocket which is, thing. Are we going to talk about this hot pocket thing? I know you've mentioned it a few times. and I, I'm, I'm picturing I, like a Ken burrito type situation well, I, what it, is the hot pocket it is it is similar to that so okay again i don't like to be cold so on my bed when i'm right now i'm full on hot pocket it starts out heated heated mattress pad on the bed fleece sheets shout out to cuddle duds if you ever if you ever <laughs> haven't had cuddle duds uh you know sleepwear or sheets is that man they're so soft and but anyway um got the fleece sheets then it's fleece top sheet then it's heating blanket and then my big new comforter that uh jill got me a new comforter for christmas and it's like sherpa lined on the on the back side of it and is so like a, is that like wool what is sherpa uh no sherpa it's is not sherbert, I don't know. that's food yeah oh yeah see and sherbert is cold so it is that's i, I would, would rather have a sherbert blanket frankly i don't have to get up for a midnight <laughs> snack i get hot at night <laughs> you might be on to see when you spout out these ideas next thing you know somebody <laughs> down the line is going to come out with the the sherbert blanket shout out and, to cuddle uh, duds for the new sherbert blanket <laughs> But uh, so, you know, that heated mattress pad and then the the heating blanket on top. And so like when I'm I'm just like the warm, gooey center in a hot pocket, you know, <laughs> hot pocket. If you And so that's uh, that's why I call it the hot pocket. And last year, Jill had got for me new heated mattress pad and heated blanket. And they work with my my Amazon Echo or my. If I say the name, everybody knows the name of the Echo. It'll go off right here above me. But uh, so when I'm sitting in my chair at night, getting ready to go to bed, I can just say Echo. Alexa. Hot, hot pocket. Yeah, there. Alexa, <laughs> hot pocket. Oh, see, there it goes. 
But uh, I just say hot pocket and my bed turns on and gets all warmed up for me <laughs> and I get on. in there. Oh, it's just it's great. Except for that sounds horrible uh, last, to me. I couldn't I could not sleep in a bed like that. Like oh, our our thermostat is set to turn the heat down at night. So like at yeah. at about ten o'clock at night, our thermostat sets the heat down and I'm still like I'll have the kit the blankets kicked off halfway through the night. Yeah, like, mine. I don't unlike... like to be cold when I sleep, but I don't. I liked it. I like it just cold enough to where you feel like you want a blanket, but that's it. Like I don't want it anymore. Yeah, than I, that. I d my my heat goes down with the the thermostat at, at night as well, and I don't sleep all night with the hot pocket on. I just get it all warmed up and. Then it that kind of with all those extra warm fleece blankets and the Sherpa comforter and stuff, it kind of maintains or retains the heat all night long. And, but everybody, really you know, good. people talk about how like when they're in bed and they're warm, and then like you can move your feet over in the bed and like get a yeah. cool spot. It's a, see that's it's the reverse for me. Anywhere <laughs> I move my feet, my arms, my legs, I get all spread out there for me. it's all warm everywhere, all over the bed. And I think the bedspread we just, have like retains heat really well. Once it's warm under it, it's it just stays warm. Yeah. Like if you crawled in bed and just let a fart go, your feet are gonna stay warm for the rest of the night. <laughs> it's it ain't going anywhere else. <laughs> so you're solid you're there. Give yourself the Dutch oven. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and a, a heated Dutch oven. No electricity needed. Wonder if <laughs> the new, the, the, the Dutch oven line from Cuddle Duds. Hey, you can go either, <laughs> either extreme. You can get the Sherbert blankets or the, uh, the Dutch oven blanket. Anyway, the, enough about call that a man powered blanket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enough about that and me being cold in winter, but I'm pretty much going to complain like every episode about the weather until it straightens well, up and we get until back to it's back above zero. I'm going to complain right with you because this is this is too dang cold. Like yeah, you're even for minus, us, it's too cold. Minus twenty two. You're almost ne negative freezing. You know what? Freezing is like thirty two degrees, and now yeah, you're minus <laughs> twenty two. You're almost like negative freezing if i don't know if that's a thing i saw you know, somebody not posted a... a somebody posted the little weather app temperature thing from the northernmost town in alaska from yesterday okay like the furthest north town you can go in the u.s and it was negative one there it's negative two or 22 degrees in south dakota i don't know uh -huh. how that worked out we just you got hit vacation. right in the middle of it you could vacation in alaska at that at minus yeah, one we're gonna go summer in, in alaska dakota. <laughs> <laughs> in january <laughs> it's ridiculous so, cold anyway and but i've been keeping oh hey something else see i always like to wear these under these like mock turtleneck undershirts a shout out to a new sponsor of the show i'd like to, i don't know how does one set up like affiliate links i mentioned all these you know dude wipes and all this stuff i need to set up but uh <laughs> Jill had got me for Christmas. Man, this whole theme is Jill got me something for Christmas, I think. You got spoiled. This new kind of under undershirt things. Um well I used to I used to wear the ones a lot. Well, the ones that I do have and the necks are getting all tired and stuff from Kohl's. They used to have a brand called like Croft and Borrow or something like that at Kohl's. And I got a bunch of those years ago and the necks are all tired. So she had got me this one because she, you know. To, oh, you should get new shirts and necks are all tired, you know, on those. It's like, hey, you wear what you want. I can't but, do, uh, you're like Teresa, like she'll bundle up. She'll have a she'll have a t shirt on and a and a hoodie on and everything else. I never could do that. I can't do multiple layers like that. I just feel confined. Like even if, I don't yeah. I can't wear hoodies. Like I I just uh -huh. don't like them. I could put a coat on to go outside. I'm just not a fan of having multiple layers like that. I got to keep my arm free in case I got to do some Kung Fu or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> is that, does that happen a lot? Do you find yourself needing <laughs> to all of a sudden break out into some Kung Fu? If, if you've and... never been chased by a rogue rooster, you don't understand the need for immediate action. 
Sometimes you <laughs> gotta be limber. Ah, you gotta kick. <laughs> <laughs> now you're kicking chickens over there. You're kicking chickens. Well, it always it's always about the chickens there we in do, South we do Dakota. We do straight to the chickens quickly. We we do. Last we'll veer last away week, from chickens today. <laughs> okay, no chicken talk. But my new sponsor, thirty two degrees, thirty two degrees. Look at this shiny thing. I don't even see it. It's Ooh. a tag off of one of these shirts. 32 degrees heat. And then they also have 32 degrees cool. And so she got me this shirt and I put it on. And I like, I really like that. I like the way it feels. And this is like a lighter weight, almost like one of those base layer things that you would wear. If, you know, the exercise people, you know, you've seen me. I'm not an exercise <laughs> I'm not an exercise guy, but, um, but man, it's like soft and it's comfortable. And so then she saw on their website, they were having like a big sale on everything. Like a lot of the wintery sort of stuff, the 32 degree heat stuff. So I Going ordered out of business. some, they spent all their money on that dang tag. I know, man, that Looked thing like is a beautiful. Chrome license plate. Look at that thing. Shine. It's almost <laughs> blinding. Don't look directly is that metal at the tag, or is it Corey. cardboard. No, it's just cardboard. Oh, but a nice stout heavyweight cardboard it is, though. Um, see, I should get, I should figure out how to do an affiliate link or whatever. People could go buy this 32 degree stuff. Great prices. So I went on the, the site then and I ordered like another one of these mock turnecks in like a heavier weight, like a fleece. And then it's like, oh, long johns. They got long johns. So I ordered like, <laughs> lightweight long johns and middleweight long johns and then i actually i placed another order because all of that's and underwear i got some new underwear now that's under the 32 when degree did the, cool. when did this turn into a fashion podcast <laughs> we need well, we know, needed a runway we i wasn't prepared for this i would have brought maybe, music <laughs> i get i could do you want to see my underwear my no, new, no. I, I, oh, oh, I was going to say I got a new pair of them. I should have brought, you know, show and tell. But the the underwear is like comfortable. I, I like the boxer brief. Are you a boxer brief guy, Corey? Or are you a tiny yeah, white yeah, guy? Yeah, I or? like the boxer briefs. I like to buy them just slightly undersized. Just just make them so they're, they're a little too snug and it keeps you a little bit agitated and on the edge all day. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Actually, Corey's a nice guy. Just his yeah. underwear's too tight. They're just, they're just a little too tight. It keeps 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 me on my game. <laughs> now I'm I like mine a little looser, looser fitting, but just not loose, you know, hanging <laughs> off of me. But I like uh so I ordered so the regular like style of underwear that they have but i have coming now a heavier weight pair of fleece long johns they, i thought they were going to be here before the show and i could talk about it or maybe show them but i ordered some <laughs> mesh underwear i got some mesh see, underwear coming a different style they do the they do like underwear clubs now where like shinesty i think where they you can order you underwear, trade they, under they come no 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 they just send I, you new underwear every month Oh, that's okay. All right. <laughs> You're not trading underwear with other members. <laughs> like, yes. hey, you should really try these. You know, <laughs> I'd, I'll send you a pair, Corey, and you'll be like, maybe something that's a little less fitting. You'll be a little agitated. Man, next week's show is going to be great if that underwear shows up by the time you, uh, if I you get send those, you a pair. You get those traded ones from the same place you got your blanket. It's just tradeyourhotpocket.com. <laughs> oh yeah which could also be a name for the underwear that i <laughs> the hot pocket <It's... laughs> so yeah I, i'm really you know 32 degrees i i highly recommend their their products i bought some socks uh more summertime like the short like ankle socks i i don't i hate ankle socks do they I've sell got, blue uh, jeans We've got the whole damn outfit. They do not. They sell. <laughs> you they need, a, sell you need jeans and, and a hat. I'm pretty much outfitted. Yeah, today I got my 32 degree mock turtleneck thingy on, and underwear and long johns. I had to put the long johns on today too because you know the aforementioned sub freezing temperatures that are out there. We could get you one but, of those department uh, store mannequins to put in the background. We just model all of it, the yeah, whole oh, ensemble. See, 
see i'm missing the opportunity right here to have my underwear hung up in the back this is why and, you can't uh, get those merch deals but the sponsors aren't calling because you're not good at this you're not I'm displaying not, what, it properly i've got the i've got the the dude wipes here like every week i'm still i don't know could i could one get an affiliate link to like 32 like unsolicited i don't even know how that works they might See, have an affiliate link sign up on their website. You could probably find one. Because I go, so nobody buy any 32 degree stuff until I figure that out. Or if they sell it unless, on Amazon, you could just get an Amazon affiliate link and do it that way. Oh, I never, I never even paid attention if they sell it on Amazon or not, because I was going right to their website. Cause they I'm were not going to check because like, I'm just not that deals. interested, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> I might check that out for like, we don't, that's, that's just ridiculous. Anyway, what else is up? Yeah, we did have a a topic. We that we do have a topic. We were gonna yep. that we we're gonna. We th actually and, had a, a massive conversation. We always we never have short conversations, do we? No, not on the phone. Corey, Jill, Jill always tells me your lifestyle doesn't your your lifestyle doesn't allow me to like get a good night's rest or whatever because Corey will call me <laughs> at a decent Corey will call me at a decent hour of the day you know yes after dinner sort of thing and the next thing you know everybody's in bed it's dark outside the whole city shut down we had a we had a nine mile a nine mile conversation the other day it ended up being almost 11. the thing was yeah. we hit we hit nine and three quarters mile before midnight and then the the, <laughs> oh, the watch right. thing starts over from scratch. That's right at midnight. And so what? Here's why we say it was a nine mile conversation. Corey paces when he talks on the phone. He the whole walks time. The whole time. <laughs> and we were on the phone. Corey he called me like eight thirty, eight thirty ish p.m. in the yeah. evening. And I think we hung up the phone that night about quarter after one. In the morning, yeah. could, so I don't know, it was about four and a half hours or something like that. Uh, and but we he never walked, resolved the conversation either. Like, we, we could have not. talked another four hours, I think. And we thought, well, let's just talk about it here because it was a good topic. And, you know, for nine miles, well, nine miles worth is how much Corey walked in. I don't remember how we got yeah. on the subject to begin with. Well, okay. Well, it's because Jill, Jill wanted to have some fun. And I disappointed her. And uh, <laughs> it's a different conversation. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> she, uh, where it started, I was telling you that Jill had uh, on January first. I get an order. At, you know, eBay cha ching comes up, and I look at it, and uh, the buyer's note said first on the first. Okay, so. I'm looking here. Well, it turns out it was Jill that had bought something from me and she wanted to be like the first person to buy something from me on January 1st. You know, my, my first buyer of the year. But I had to I had to disappoint her because somebody earlier that morning had already bought something from me. But she was she was redeemed because it was an item that she had given me, which is also a reoccurring theme of half of the sales that every time I tell Jill what I sold that day, did I get you that? Did I get you that? Did I find did that? Where did I did get Did you just say she bought something that she had given you? No. Well, okay. Actually, it kind of did turn out that way because <laughs> it was it was she didn't give it to me. Jill. It was an item. It was a um a crocheted like a uh, Christmas stocking. Mm -hmm. And it was actually something she had found when we were at the yard sales and she brought it over and said, Hey, you know, other Christmas stuff. She said, how about this? So I actually purchased it and then had it in my store and she was going through looking for something that was, you know, reasonably priced, something that she might want. So she bought this stocking from me and so she found it twice. She found it twice. Exactly. See, it must've okay. been a great item because she, you know, She's it caught picker. her. It caught her eye. Jill is a, a very good picker, and but the item that I had sold already on the first was actually another Jill item because they were some um, dude, dude, dude love or wait, what are those shoes that everybody hey the dude, hey dudes, yeah, hey, hey dudes. dudes. 
she bought me a pair of hey dudes thinking that i might actually wear these things like out in public but you know i'm no no i'm i'm too manly of a man to wear that style of a shoe <laughs> out in in public you know i'll probably get crucified for that but it was uh it's like now, i have a she's pair like, of hey dudes and a pair of okay. crocs and i have worn the treads off both of them talking to you <laughs> maybe they should be my phone talking shoes they are not and, a 10 mile walking shoe i can tell you that they they well, are light they're comfortable but you don't put 10 miles on hey dudes in one day it hurts exactly that's what <laughs> oh you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to throw this out there. Jill, Jill, uh, conversates, whatever conversates or whatever, uh, back and forth a little bit with, uh, Mike Shad juice, you know, okay. his huge yep. weight loss stuff. And she was throwing some stuff out to him about, uh, shoes. Cause Jill's all about shoes and getting stuff, you know, getting proper footwear for, for your feet, for whatever task you're doing. And now so she was a sponsor out and, for us. Who's that? We need Chad a footwear Juice? sponsor. We need to get Chad, the official podcast of Mike. Oh, yeah, footwear. Who is it? Hey, dudes? We or... could, well, I don't know. We need to find one that, that we can have a 10-mile conversation with and, and not be exhausted afterwards. We need good footwear. Well, I well there you go. Well, I'll have to check the 32-degree site. Maybe they sell. <laughs> maybe they sell some shoes. We don't know. But anyway, so all of that then, Jill bought this from me. She wanted to be, oh, wait, I was telling she had, the first item I sold was the Hey Dudes, which was shoes that she had given me. And she had found them like a really good price. I think Hey Dudes was having a sale. This was like before Christmas. So she had bought them and I wasn't going to wear them. So she's like, I'm not going to return them. Just you can list them and sell them. She actually had bought two pair for me. And so I listed them and they sold right after Christmas and Somebody beat her well, to it. they sold on January 1st. And so it was technically her item. So she was the first sale of, and the first, she was my first sale and my first buyer of 2024. That's yeah, that's nice. the year we're in 2024. So anyway, but where the conversation started was Jill was then a repeat buyer because she's bought something from me before. Oh. And when you sell something, it <laughs> I comes I wasn't sure up. where you were going with that. I forgot I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> That's our topic, Corey. Is okay, we're well, bringing it back. Is, bringing it back to that it was, uh, she was a repeat buyer. You know, when you have an, an order, it comes up and it'll show you like in green under there that somebody's a repeat buyer. That's right. And so that got around to... The conversation, us, hey, yeah. that got Corey, us talking you... about growing, growing our eBay business, right? Yes, kind of yes. took us down that path. So yes. I, I, I know we've had this conversation before. I know if you've watched the Grams and Pops channel for very long, at one point we had this conversation on that channel too. Teresa hates these conversations, by the way. So uh -huh. we don't have a lot of these on our channel. As soon as I start talking about numbers, her eyes glass over and. She may or may not fall off the chair at some point, so we just don't do that. <laughs> but in in the in the terms of business, when when we're growing a business, Teresa and I have always had a kind of a a spreadsheet we follow, a kind of a formula uh -huh. we follow, and okay. trying to yes. apply that to this business. I think during our conversation, we kind of realized <laughs> applying that to this eBay business that we're both running, at least in the the way yeah. we're running it was difficult for, for yeah. several reasons. And so I, I liked what, what you were saying. I guess part of that conversation about how to get repeat buyers, because mm -hmm. then we started to look at our numbers a little bit of where we were at with, you know, how many, you know, ran a report and stuff, how many repeat buyers did we have, uh, which is how many followers, also how many followers that you have in your store um for your ebay anyway we're talking primarily ebay because that's where we we both sell but you had brought up then how it relates to you kind of have a system that you do like a three three step system yeah, for your business or what you what you do well, when we're growing any of our businesses no matter what they were from a service business at one time to our escape rooms to our e-commerce stores no matter what that business was we kind of use the same three categories to grow in and, okay. and that's how do we get 
more customers? How do we get uh-huh. more money from each customer? And how do we reduce our expenses for the business? Those three categories are where we try to find growth opportunities. Yes. Right. And when we tried to apply that to this business, one of the first Uh questions we asked, the first question we always ask is we try to brainstorm as many ideas as we can in that first Mm -hmm. category, which is how do we get more customers, which is what we were talking about. One of the easiest ways in most businesses is to get repeat customers that yeah that kind of falls into the second category but it also kind of it's kind of an overlap yeah and we realized that we don't have customers in this business it's the only business business i'm doing air quotes it's the only business yeah we've been we've really taken part in that we don't have customers they're not our customers yeah and and that yeah. is kind of what led us into the all night conversation. Yeah, because you know that they're that they're eBay, they're kind of really eBay customers, and you you are, they are. you're like a mini warehouse for eBay. Uh, you're yeah, a, I mean, even eBay sees them as their customers, right? They they actively block you from talking to them off the platform. Technically, they're not your customers. You don't have access to that customer after the fact in any real way. I mean, yeah. well, I'll put it this way in. In our old businesses, there's yeah. there's a customer journey, you know, they and you could find there's charts online that show the customer journey if you look that up. And yeah. it's basically they become aware of your business. They know who you are. They mm-hmm. they buy from you or they, you know, they interact with you in some way. They buy from you. You nurture that relationship to a point where they kind of like your business and they're engaged with you in some yeah. way. And they, and ultimately they end up becoming a fan or an advocate for you, and they're telling other people about your business. So and the word of mouth, you don't just, get you any know, of that. Hey, I I bought something from this person, or this person paid that service to me. I and I think yeah, and I think the I statement that actually them. brought that up was, you know, if somebody buys something from SSK Promo and their friend says, "Hey, where'd you get that?" Yeah, the answer was eBay, right? Uh, yes, and that's that's where I was going with some of those questions: is how do I get, how do I get a repeat buyer, or how do how do I get somebody to know that when they bought an item from me, SSK promo, when they received it, they thought, oh, cool, I got this from it, and then when they told their friend, yeah. I bought it from SSK Promo. I bought this. Oh, hey, look, you can go to Grams and Pops Vintage Shop and they have, you know, these kind of items. And being everything sellers, you know, we kind of pretty much have the same. um, And a lot of eBay people, unless you're niched down really far, you know, you're kind of that everything seller. So it is hard to say, oh, I go to Grams and Pops for all my such and such needs or well, you know, these sorts. And that was part of the conversation too. We are everything sellers. Yeah. We, we kind of sell a little bit of every category we find. We learn new categories all the time, but we're niched down too. We're not niched down to one product, but we're niched down by yeah. our region and what we can find. Like uh, I find a lot of one thing, you know, we, we find a lot in about four or five different categories. Department 56, yeah. we're always finding. Littlest yeah. pet shop tree and Barbies, like Teresa's always picking those up. Like you, you tend to specialize in a few categories, so you're not niched down to say just a shoe seller, but yeah. you certainly have categories that you find and specialize. That you find in. more, yeah, and so yeah, and and that's I watch, you know, a lot of different YouTube videos and stuff, and it's like, ah, oh, man, these people in this area, where are they finding all this stuff? I never see, yeah. X, but you know, I never see all of those vintage toys or whatever. And well, there are a lot of vintage toys around our area, but just you know, as an example, I don't, I don't see. Well, okay, you take people that are over in the Carolinas and stuff like that that are finding golf clubs constantly. There's just yeah. the, every place they go, they find all these golf clubs because there's a lot of um, or like these golf shoe sellers are grabbing like Hoka's and Air Jordans and stuff like. That. You don't see that around here. Where we're yeah. at, I've been to thrift stores for the last year and a half, almost two years, and garage sales, and I don't think I've ever seen a pair of Hoka's in real life. Yeah. Like, literally haven't seen a pair. And Air but, Jordans, maybe you find 
one pair in a year and they're they're hashed and it, i mean yeah there's just certain things you find and specialize in there's certain things you don't and and i guess say in your area, i don't know what's all in your area but you might find a different like you might find a lot more uh work boots or something like that you yep. might find a lot more like car you're not finding you know vintage uh sports jerseys and things like that but you might mm -hmm. find a lot more car heart and yep. and work related apparel that are and so yeah do, being that you kind of get again not niche down but you what's available in your area when you're just yeah, you do. when you're sourcing like that if you're not reaching out to other sources and doing like online auctions and things where they're shipping it to you if you're talking mainly in your area yeah, you get. There are some really... things that are going to fall into your store that are going to be one offs. I mean, yeah. if, if I found a brand new pair of Hoka's at a garage sale, you bet I'd buy them. Like, I, oh, I, yeah. I may find a one off, but the vast majority of what's in my store falls into five or six categories that we find quite often. It's just. Yeah. Those are what we source because of where we source and where we're at. Well, and it's it's also what uh, you know that it sells. And so right. when you are out there, your eye, boom, 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 your eye, when you're at a sale, it looks and goes, oh, hey, look, Lilith's Pet Shop. I know those colors. I know that design. Hey, look, there's this sort of an, uh, of an item. And so you do... <laughs> Does your brain get you you niche down by it does? What I think a lot of things what you're finding. Yeah, I think a lot of things niche down, but I think the point is we're all niched to some extent. We may have six yeah. niches, but we're all niched to some extent. Yes. Just like I, you can't I would help agree it. with that. And so then it then you know the conversation was what can one do? to okay like how important are followers in say your ebay store again we're primarily to i don't know how macari and poshmark and any of these things work uh yeah, and the, I think the, the other platforms the broad like the bigger question there was how do we get more customers and 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 that led us to this conversation where we realize we don't actually have customers ebay has customers right yeah so they're, they're exactly. actually ebay's customers and we don't really have customers. So so that led us into the conversation of how do we get customers at all? Like, how do we make them our customers? Yeah, yes. And and that's what led us, like, we haven't even covered the actual real question. We were talking about growing the business and coming up with ideas for that category because yeah. we got stuck in this part of it where this part of the the eBay reselling thing we do we don't really have customers. So we're trying to solve that piece. Some people, yeah. so I guess the first question, why why would you want to solve this? Is, should everybody be worried about solving it? Is, well, you know, a lot of yeah, people I, might not care that they don't have the customer if they're just doing this for a few hundred bucks a month. Yeah, if you're, yeah, exactly. And, and for, how are you getting those customers? And I guess my part of that was seeing that, that it was a, a repeat buyer and, and followers and how do you get those customers once you have got a buyer, once somebody has bought from you, how do you get them to be the customer? Right. That's yeah, ultimately, the that's the conversation we we spent a lot of time on. Yeah. And, and I don't think we spent a lot of time on who should be trying to convert them to a customer, which I don't think we need to. I think, you know, if you're running a business and all you need is 500 bucks a month and from your yeah. eBay thing you're doing, this isn't even a conversation that matters. Like this conversation yeah. doesn't matter to you. If you want to scale this into something bigger, if, if you want to get this to a point where it's a, where it's a real business that can run with or without you. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you would want, that to be yeah. a customer and have it be your customer and and those are personal it depends on what you're what you're yeah. doing for me well, i want even the if, customers to be my customers even if you're doing this for just you know extra money supplement some bills some income if you have a regular nine to five and you're not you know mm -hmm. full-time or whatever th there's always that how do i get those customers how do i yeah. uh, how do i get people to buy my product whether they're a your, buyer or a, a customer i just what? noticed your name down there <laughs> tapeworm tony yeah <laughs> tapeworm tony <laughs> yeah that's uh <laughs> okay continue 
that's a that's a shout out to um in the comments from last week when I was talking about being gaunt and you said I probably had a tapeworm and uh, Caleb from over a two old guys reselling podcast, which, by the way, you're going to be on there. You week. and Teresa are going to be on the two old guys reselling podcast next week, yep. um, whichever whichever week that is, when if it's coming up this week or the next week, uh, but a future episode. That's upcoming quickly. Well, I think they release Wednesdays, but, so we should be on it two days after this releases. Two days after this, okay. So yep. check out check out that and uh, but yeah, tapeworm tapeworm Tony <laughs> down there was was uh, uh, in the comments said that Ken had a new name. I got a, a bunch of new names all the time. So I'll this is why our conversations stretch into four hour that's, conversations. That's, we do get sidetracked <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine mile conversation, but so as, as we started to look at that, so what customers or what buyers that we do have, um, well, I'm like, can, can I back up a little bit in the conversation? Just Please. give a real quick, one of the first things that started to, to strike me when you were saying about kind of the three things that you do, and I like the way that you do how, you know, how to get customers, how to get more money from the customers and. What, how to reduce the expenses yeah reduce reduce expenses. expenses and i like that that process that you do where where you and Teresa, whether it's again your your ebay reselling or any business that you were in i like that process that you were saying where once a once a quarter or once every 90 days or whatever you kind of sit down and you say how can i how can i get new customers and you just brainstorm and you write down ideas and that might be uh you know some sort of different marketing tactic that might be you know product placements in ebay that might be different promotions that might be different sales that might whatever it is but you write down all of those ideas and then yep. you you are picking one of those ideas that you feel that's the best and we pick the one we think we it. can do the fastest which basically okay. we say which which one takes the least amount of effort and will actually give us some return okay and and we do that one because it's it's the easiest we think we can knock it out and and be done yeah. with it okay and and really and, every time we've ever done that you you can't do that every 90 days and not grow a business i don't care what business it is. you could be a dentist i don't care what business it is yeah. if you do that every 90 days you can't not grow the business because you're kind of not not even not reinventing yourself or what no. you're doing you're but you you're you're doing something different you're shaking it up you're putting thought into what you're doing into we're making the business a small and, change in three different categories of the business yeah every 90 days yeah and and hopefully now i you said you can't help but grow your business i i assume at some point that you have said yes this seems like a really good idea and you've implemented that and it's like 90 days later or whatever whether you do it 90 days or once a quarter or whatever you're um that's like oh well that didn't work or do you it happens all the time that's that's okay. why there's three categories yeah I mean, so, you, you could swing and miss, but the odds that you're going to swing and miss in three categories in the same quarter is pretty small. Like one of those yeah. is going to hit. I I think that's just a good idea. And we, we had talked about that, I think, last, last year you had called and we had another marathon conversation mm -hmm. and you were asking me, what are some ideas... Because you guys were compiling your list, what are some ideas? Well, that's and uh, that's one thing you find when you do that method to grow your business. That's one thing you find after the first year or so is you start running out of ideas. It gets stale, yeah. and that's why yes. community is important. If you're not talking to other people doing this thing that you do, yeah, you will run out of ideas. Yes, but it, it, if I just hop on the phone with Ken, he's going to say something I have never thought of. And and it may be a good idea, it may be a garbage idea, but it's a new idea you didn't have. Pretty pretty much, you can rely that it's going to be one of those garbage <laughs> ideas, I knew or when I said something that. like <laughs> you know we we tried that failure hashtag fail. Um, 
But I like I like that process. I like what yeah. what you're doing there. And it's something that I'm going to start to to implement to just really think about where I'm at. Now, you did say you can also go to the community and ask and that can open up a real can of worms. Can. Of, and it's because great that it does. There's a lot of folks out there that that are. Oh, this is the this is the way that you need to do it, and that's it, and blah blah blah. And there's other people that are just gonna, you know, take a crap on whatever your your idea is. Yeah. Like we were we were talking with the the buyer things uh, or getting the repeat customers, and how do you get those customers to come back and buy? You know, one of the processes could be how do I get a customer to return? You know, how do I get yeah, new I buyers? That's... That might be where the that might be where we pick that up is how do we get more money per customer? It, we kind of veered out of column one into column two. Yeah. And the thing we talked about was we got to get them to buy again, or yeah, or get them to recommend us to a friend, or at least know that they bought from us in the first place. Yes. And that's yeah, and that's really what led the conversation. So we started brainstorming ideas of how we can how how we can make them our customer meaning they know who they bought from yeah and we can nurture that customer to get them to the point where they're telling their friends where they bought from because as it is like like we said you know somebody bought this vintage gi joe guy from me somebody asked them hey where'd you get that cool gi joe they're not saying grams and pops or ssk promo yeah. they're saying ebay and that to me is a core problem that none of none of those other columns matter if, if you don't have, for me, now this isn't for everybody, you call your business yeah. a business and, and it is for me, if I don't have a customer, I don't have a business. Uh -huh. And in the last yeah. year and a half, we have very few customers. We have some, but eBay gets 90% of them. Yeah, exactly. And that, that just really made me start to, you know, my wheels were spinning, you know, during this conversation, uh, just just different avenues that I hadn't thought of before that, oh yeah, I guess that's right. I feel that, you know, I'm doing this great thing and I'm, uh, you know, I'm sustaining myself, but uh, I don't have to go work for somebody else. But in the end, yeah. I guess I really am working for somebody else. And we both are because, <laughs> you know, I don't have, I don't, have a direct boss standing over my head going, you know, you need to complete these tasks or whatever. But if I'm not listing every day, if I'm not doing, you know, all of the things that the eBay algorithm wants you to do to get your products out there, to get seen, to get, then you take a few days off, just like it at a, a regular, regular job, you take a few days off and the production goes down, the sales go down, whatever. And so I was kind of just looking at things differently um then you know looking well, we started looking we started looking to like like just that train of thought of the customer being ours versus ebay's and things we started yeah. looking at our own ebay stores to see you know do we even get repeat customers and yes. and what are we doing to get repeat customers i know we talked about like you had always put kind of a little note in your box and and you were doing it for a completely different reason than i am mm. yes so you, uh, you, when I first started reselling and you go out and you watch all the, the content and stuff and, and you'll see people, some people were very adamant about, you got to put a thank you card. You got to put some sort of, you know, something, some people throw little candies in there. Some people do something to, to get noticed when mm -hmm. the buyer opens the package other than just throwing it in the box and shipping it out. And everybody does stuff differently. But I had started out, it's like, you know, watch some channels. Oh, yeah, you got to put a thank you card. You put thank you card. You put whatever, stickers, anything in there. And I used to do that. But my sole thought on that was to get a positive. I was trying to get a positive feedback from yeah. from my customer that when they opened it up and the, and the little card would say, you know, thank you for purchasing, you know, from me, we strive to... I don't know why I put we because it's just me, but I wanted to seem bigger. It's the so I would we. put yeah. we, yes, we, you know, strive to blah, 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 you know, positive feedback, stuff like that. And that was, that was my thought of that. I never thought of how can I get this person 
to like follow me or to repeat by or do something. It was, and then it was like, how important then after a while, it's like, I had no way to measure that was right. the fact that I was putting a card in that box helping at all. What was I getting followers? So I wasn't seeing many repeat buyers. Yep. And so I kind of abandoned that. But so now what I what I do when I package orders, I print out the, the packing slip for each order because it's part of my process to make sure that I can that I get the stuff packaged right. The right label goes on the box and I get it out. That's just part of my process. And everybody does that different. But it, um where was I going with that? So and but on that packing slip that I'm putting in the box, I am writing a handwritten thank you on there. Um, there's a place where you can have the do the message uh, to the buyer. And I thank them for for that as well. And, you know, say, hey, positive feedback is appreciated. And also on that packing list, there's a, a QR code that goes back to my store. And so I usually highlight that I'm writing my personal thank you. And that's going in the box. So that's a, I, I mean, that's a good step. At least you were doing something. Surprisingly, even this part is, is a bit of a heated debate in the community. And some, so yeah. I've seen this turn into arguments in different parts of the community where, oh, don't put anything in there or do put anything in there. It's a waste of time or it's not. At, yeah. At least you're putting something in there that has a little bit of purpose. Yeah. Like you, like you had an intention for why you were putting it in there. Yes. And, and we did the same thing. We, well, we did it in a slightly different way. We just had a completely different intention, right? Okay. But our end goal was completely different. Our end goal was to get them to know who we were. Uh huh. Like, like we wanted them to know that it's our it's our first interaction with this person. Basically, when they bought from us, it was a complete accident. They, it's like bumping into someone on the street. They weren't yeah. looking for you. You just happened to be on the street they were walking on. Yes. That's, that's eBay buyers. So yeah. now we've bumped into them. That box, when they open it, that's that's what you say after they've bumped into you. That's your first real interaction and your chance to build the relationship. Yes. So that's how we approached it. And, and our goal was simply to get them to know who they bought from and to buy again or to tell someone else where they got yeah. theirs. Like we want them saying grams and pops, right? We don't want them yes. saying eBay. Yes. So that's that's the approach we took it to it. So our sticker, there's a sticker in there with a QR code that goes to our link tree that shows all of our social. It shows our YouTube channel, our eBay store, our website, our Instagram. Yeah. And then there's also a two-sided thank you note in color with our logos on it that say thank you. And and basically says be sure to leave a review and come back and visit our store. And and we're actually consider really tweaking that to reach a yeah. different objective in the next year here yes but that one it worked okay i mean it definitely makes a difference i know we looked at our reports for last year yeah you know like <laughs> let me just double check so i give you the right number here but we we ran the sales and under performance and sales yes for all of last year and we didn't have a ton but we had 156 repeat buyers okay which to me when you said that you know 156 like wow because i had in 2023 i had eight repeat buyers okay and so if jill yeah. jill being one of them so does it i technically i had like seven <laughs> seven repeat buyers um and so that's where we were kind of going with a lot of those, you know, brainstorming different ideas and stuff of how can you get a person to recognize that they bought it from you, from Grams and Pops. Yep. Again, like you said, to either tell somebody else, oh, hey, where'd you get that cool thing? I got it. I got it on eBay from this place. Because people are probably always going to say they bought it on eBay, that it wasn't Amazon. They were going to say eBay or Macari or Poshmark or whatever platform you sell on. But if you can get part of that conversation to be, I bought that on eBay from this from this seller, Grams and Pops, and they good sell step. they sell these sorts of things. They have more of these, or they have similar ideas. That's where we're kind of talking about the the niche thing. If you were really niche down, 
and you sold yeah. the same thing all the time, it would be much easier. And I think, like we to, said, I think all of us are, some of us are just niched into several categories. Like we will forever have Department 56 in our store. Yeah. Like we will almost forever have Lilith's Pet Shop and Barbies in our store. It's just stuff that we find all the yes. time. And unless it becomes unprofitable, then we will probably always carry it. So yes. there are, you know, there's certain niches they're always going to be able to come back to. And and those are just a couple examples. I mean, we're in other niches too, but it's based on stuff we find. And I think getting them, getting them, like you said, to say, it, it doesn't matter if they say, yeah, we got it on eBay, but we want them to know they bought it from us. Yeah. Yeah. I got it on eBay from this seller and, and, and so, you know, eight repeat buyers, that's a number then I guess that's kind of a, a goal or a benchmark now because it's the first time I've looked at it. How can I get in 2024 more yeah. repeat buyers? Now that also goes with, I think that number of followers. So if, if you look at your store, if you, if you do have a store, not every, not every eBay yep. seller has a store. So I don't know, um, how you would track a number or how you would do something like that if you don't have but on my storefront there it tells you know name your store how many positive feedback how many items that you've sold and how many people are following your store now the yeah. advantage to having those followers is if they have the notifications and such turned on for that when you list new items they're going to see that Oh, right. Grams and Pops listed more, you know, Little's Pet Shop. I bought from them. I'm going to go there. And so trying to get more followers or at that point, would you consider if somebody is following, if they are a follower, are they then a customer? For me? Well, for some people, maybe for me, no. I mean, okay. to, to me, that's the beginning. It's still very beginning stages. I think that's a step forward. I, I certainly think that's a step forward. And and maybe maybe they fall into the customer. They're just very low in the customer journey. Like they know who yeah. you are enough to have followed your store. But they still have to make it through. Like we still have to nurture that relationship. Yes. We, ha we have to get the... We have to get it to a point where they have some kind of affinity for us. Like they, they not only know us, but they like us. And then ultimately... The, the end stage is to turn them into kind of a brand ambassador for us. We want them telling other people about us. When people yeah. ask where they got something, we want them saying from us. Like we want them to be an advocate for us. And that's that's kind of a, a switch from customer to fan. But that's where, yeah. like, that's where you want your customer to be. In any business, you want to get them to the point where they're telling their friends, right? That's... Yes. You want them to be a fan of your business. Yes. And with with the current, the way we do eBay now, you, not only do you not have fans of your store for most people, like, like we don't uh -huh. really, for most people, you don't have a fan of your store. You don't even have a customer. Like You don't even know who they are. If you want to send them an email tomorrow, you really, there's, there's not yeah. a great well, method for that to happen. eBay does have within their platform a way to send some of that, some of that marketing. Yeah. But if eBay kicked you off the platform tomorrow, do you really have customers or do they stay? Well, with no, no, no. Yeah. You can't. And that's, that's one of the, it, that was uh, part of that big, long conversation was how do you get those customers that are on this platform to be your customers outside of the platform? eBay really frowns upon you trying to make sales outside of the platform, you know, you can't That's... in your messaging and stuff like that. You can't contact somebody, but could you get somebody outside the platform to say, Hey, and so, you know, we, we talked about a ton of different scenarios yeah. and some of them are very involved where, you know, in that box, when you're putting that thing, Hey, go out and, uh, you know, go to our website, the Grams of Pops website, or SSK that's Promo, why I think and that, if you have something box, set up there. That's why I think that box is so important. It's your first real interaction with them outside of eBay. Yeah, I, yes. I think if you don't do something in that box, then then you're just saying, I'm okay with this being eBay's customer. 
which is yeah. fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Unless, well, and then unless there, you're trying to build a customer base in a business of your own. Yeah. You know, if if you're in the camp where you just want to make a thousand dollars a month on eBay or however much on eBay and eBay's doing it for you and you're not building a business or an exit plan or anything like that, then none of this really matters. But if you are trying to build something bigger and you, you yeah. do want them to be your customers, that box mm. is vital. Uh, you know, and just getting, yeah, getting one, getting a person to buy from you again is another is another sale. And then that's a, a getting yep. them to follow your store so that they do see those new items. Obviously, they liked an item that you had. They liked the, uh, something that they bought from you or they even if they just followed it because they were looking at some of the stuff and they go, oh, maybe this guy sells Department 56 and I'm looking for the the country church you know village maybe they follow just so that at some point they might see where you listed it and then of course i've seen this discussion you've talked about that in different discord groups and different you know the facebook groups uh where oh i make just as many sales and i don't put anything in the box i just throw it in there and and blah 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 and yeah. you're wasting your time and you're spending all that money for printing up cards and you don't need to do that and it's like well Maybe, they're not wrong. Maybe not. They're they're, they're not wrong. They're not they're wrong. Also... You don't you don't need to do that. I think what I think what they're missing. In, well, I, I think they're defensive because you're telling them their business way isn't the right way, but you're not. Yeah, that's not at all what we're saying. Oh, it's not. But their I, their business way is not right. Just the no. way the way that I do it. <laughs> SSK, <laughs> the way the SSK promo, the SSK promo method, the DOG delusions of grandeur says that everybody else does their business wrong. Uh, yeah, I think they just have you, a Corey. different well, end goal. See, I was telling Corey that, that, you know, he does his business wrong. And that's why the conversation was like four and a half hours or, or nine miles worth is because it was most me, just me consoling Corey, trying to, you know, dry up his tears because <laughs> I, very... Because I offended him, and uh, and now I just I found out that it's just tight underwear the whole yeah. time. You got me in my your, feelings. Your your drawers are just a little too snug. And I'm um, telling you, it works. Try. We it. need to it. We need to go down I size. Want, I don't want to be. Maybe that's why I'm just like, just like out there. You I'm ever just see? Happy you ever see one of them lions? Think one of them lions at the zoo like you got the lazy lion that just lays on the rocks and never moves and yeah then you got that big lion that's up front just pacing back and forth looks yeah. like he wants to eat everybody he's wearing small underwear he's gonna get the <laughs> snack first i'm telling you that's uh <laughs> this see, is not a business strategy concept. This, it is the Teresa just underwear. bought me small underwear okay <laughs> In, intentionally so that you no, know it was not it was a, like something look the, the package looked full maybe that's why you know kind of this a fat guy in a little coat the rails fat guy <laughs> in a little coat but here's here's the thing i it, remember yeah. where she bought the I, underwear i knew who okay. we bought them from and now uh -huh. that mine are a little snug, we know where to go to get the different size from. Like we are yeah. a customer of that place. Yes. We, we're we not exactly. yet a well, fan of that place, but we are a customer of okay. that place and we know where we bought from. See, that brings 32, me back to yes. 32 the, degrees. That's, that's what this is. It's branding. That's what we're talking is, about is branding. It is. I got the one shirt. It's like, oh, this is really comfortable. I went back out. No. I bought. Nope, we can't. Nope. What? We're not going down this this route again. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm relaying it to what we're doing about how they got a customer. I like the product that I got in the thing. This tag is really attractive. I see what you're doing. This was in the box or whatever. This bright silver thing makes it seem like it's, you know, maybe a better product than one of this. I went back to their website. On their website, they were running sales. Boom, when I went there, they had promotions and sales, which when it's somebody does come branding, to my eBay it? store, it is. Um, uh, well, I got to their store because of the promotions and the sales, which is another part of getting customers or at least getting buyers with the promotions and such. Well, and look, you told I us. I bought their product again. You told all us about it, too. 
and I have another order coming. Yes. And now I'm pitching. I'm pitching. I'm saying, hey, I, and that was on actually that was unintentional. Me too. I was just talking about my my new attire yeah, is... because it's cold out <laughs> stuff, stuff. But I guess it does now that I've I'm poing. I'm, I just had a I just had an apostrophe. And now, if, uh, you, if you've watched this show for more than an episode or two, you probably thought to yourself, this must be scripted. It's that good. It's not, guys. No, it's not I scripted. See, and, did you see <laughs> the realization, though? Did you see the realization, though? Because I'm telling Corey, we're setting I up saw the, the light show, and I'm turn like, on. oh, I want to talk about, you know, that I'm cold, and I want to do my little Ken complains about winter thing like that, and I'm going to talk about my new underwear, and uh, just because I thought it was funny, and I could liken it to, but here, in the end, hashtag we life it lesson, circle. it came back around to... Here's the th problem with people, our conversations, too. I don't feel like we've even touched the meat of the, I'm not going to say oh. I don't feel like we've gotten to the core <laughs> of this. You can't, <laughs> we can't go from underwear, from underwear talk to touching meat. That's yeah. We're I don't not feel like do we've, <laughs> we've gotten to the, the core of this conversation. I don't think we've gotten anywhere oh, near the end of this conversation. So and we're at an hour. Like I just want to stay. If anybody made it this far in the show, so far, if you are here at the end in the comments, uh, you know, tell us what do you, you know, what is your idea of a customer versus a buyer? Uh, how do you go about? Do you put anything in the box? Do you think it's a waste of time? Do you, are you doing thank you cards? Are you doing something? What are you doing to well, or tell us try we're to get ridiculous. a repeat buyer? Yeah tell, yeah, tell us what you think of this conversation. Well, we know for, we're for ridiculous. Me, I mean, we but talked it, a lot about building a business, right? Yeah. And, and rather or not, this even was a business. We talked about that yes. for an hour at least. Yes. And and when we're building businesses, we're building them w with the idea they're like a house. We're, we're going to build it. Yeah. And, and we're going to build it up as big and as cool and add features and everything throughout the years <laughs> while we run the business. But at the end of the business, when we're ready to move out, we have an exit plan. That house has value at the end. Right? Yes. We could we could sell it. We could have somebody else run it for us. It has like part of the business is just the processes inside. But yes. at the end it has value. And this eBay you, thing that do we're you doing. See folks why our conversations go for nine miles or four hours. <laughs> because you know, I tried to wrap it up with a little bit of uh humor I don't want to wrap about it up. my underwear again and see Corey just he'll just keep I just going built the house. and going. He loves he loves this business talk. He loves analyzing things. And um, and so I just said, well, Corey's walking nine miles. I'm usually just, you know, sitting sedentary in my chair doing nothing. I don't move for the whole time. You know what? Time. This is why you need a hot but pocket. If you, if I if, got up if and you <laughs> just got up and moved around, oh, you wouldn't oh. need a hot pocket. Oh, wait. Am I, did I just switch this conversation to Jill now? <laughs> She, that's she's constantly if you would do something get you need some circulation that's what she tells me you need circulation other than uh i'm not always right. just sitting around well just, let's so let's end the show this way there's there's three okay. categories in this yes. in this thing we do for growing our business inside okay. those categories there's several levels of those categories you oh, can break tons into of stuff yes now if this conversation didn't put you to sleep and you're still here and you want to hear more of this kind of talk, let us know. Yes. We'll talk yes. more about it. I don't think we've even come close to scratching this piece no, of the topic. Not at all. Not at like all. Like we did, we barely just got into what the topic even was. So yes, if you want to hear more of this, let us know if this bored the crap out of you and you want to hear more about our underwear, let us know that too. Cause we'll go a different <laughs> direction. I'll even show them got time. on display. I'll set up a little <laughs> runway right here. I'll model all my new items and stuff. But uh, yeah, Corey, good conversation. Not the most exciting uh, show or whatever, but hopefully people... I disagree. Hopefully people got um, got the uh, wheel spinning a little bit and thinking about stuff and maybe, you know, something that they can, they can talk about. And um, so... Well, I'm sure we'll probably talk about this more in the future. Heck, maybe even next week. Or maybe I'll I feel have like when something. we're done here, I should just call you and we should finish this conversation because there's so much more to say. What I 
This is true. Yes. I know you, you got to go to breakfast, though. So I'm going to call. Gonna, I'm yeah, I go next door to breakfast on, on Sundays at, at my folks' house is, is always a good time. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go do that. Um, <laughs> And yeah, we'll we'll you could call me later in the day. Although the football playoffs are are on NFL playoffs, I know you won't be watching those. But uh, you know, shout out to my Browns, the Cleveland Browns who lost yesterday. They still talk uh, about lost, underwear. They lost mis. <laughs> Oh, my Cleveland Browns. <laughs> that's 